double him. He takes a half Holy court shoot. shot with four seconds to go. Well, that was a close one. Have you ever seen a top team in the NBA win a game? And this is a team that is arguably the best in the NBA. And have you ever seen them tie a franchise record? Not to mention you had to beat a contender without two of your best bench players. Just for people to say that that game proved why you're not going to win a championship. How do I even explain this? I'm going to keep this intro very short because I want to talk about this topic. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Suns and Warriors game because number one, it was definitely a close game that went down to the wire. However, both teams did have some flaws that I want to talk about. However, the main point of this video is that Phoenix won this game and now we're somehow turning to the fact that they won and this somehow proves that they're not going to win the NBA finals and that they're a fraud of a team. Yes, there is definitely context to this and I'm going to be explaining it. Now, of course, before I get into the content, you guys leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and notifications on. I'm trying at 100k by the end of the year and your subscription would be greatly appreciated. Also, I know I've been slacking on Twitch lately, but I'm going to try to stream tonight. Instead of five o'clock though, I'm going to do around three o'clock. So about three hours after this video comes out, I'm probably going to be doing an extended part of this video while also just going through Sun's Twitter, because why not? With all that being said, let's get into the video. Last night's game versus the Warriors just proved a couple things to me. Number one, they could stand with the Warriors, who's a team that a lot of people thought the Suns could not beat. And number two, if they got the win, which they did, then they'd be tying their franchise record for wins in a season. So how did we take a positive and turn it into multiple negatives? Well, after the game, the narrative got started that the Phoenix Suns couldn't beat a Warriors team if they had Steph Curry. First off, let's just address the fact that the season series right now is two to two. So Phoenix has beat them two times and the Warriors have beaten us two times. And both teams have went through injuries during that time period when they would play. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to be referencing a couple Twitter accounts that are some of the most toxic things on NBA Twitter because it's just something that a lot of people were saying as well. But the statement that, oh, Steph Curry didn't play so this game doesn't count is completely ridiculous to me. I know to some extent this is satire and I do understand that. However, there are legitimate people that believe that just because the star player didn't play that the Warriors didn't have a fair advantage. Mind you, this Dr. Guru guy is the same person that said there's level to this when the Phoenix Suns were struggling a little bit when Chris Paul went out, which by the way, he deleted the tweet after the Phoenix Suns started going crazy and going on a bunch of win streaks. The Warriors are a good team. There's no doubt in my mind about that. However, one of the biggest things that people argue is your bench. You have the best bench. However, how come you couldn't win with your bench? Jordan Poole put up 38 points. It's not like no one went off. In fact, the one thing that no one is talking about is that Phoenix really struggled in that game. They shot like 21% from three, which is not something normal that's going to happen on a daily basis. Booker shot like 5 of 22. So things like these aren't going to really happen a whole lot in a normal series setting. When you put up the stats that the Phoenix Suns put up, you would think that they would have lost that game. However, Phoenix is a really good team and I think this game should prove that. Like I said, I don't think I've ever seen a team win a game and do all those amazing things that they did last night just for people to find a negative and a positive situation. You don't see a lot of teams that play that bad just for them to end up getting the win. And mind you, after that game, put in some work. This is a team that wants to win and that will do anything for a win. And like Monty Williams has said, that not all wins are pretty. However, a win is a win. And last night in no way, shape or form was a pretty win. I'm not gonna lie. After watching the game last night and going through Twitter, I could not bear to go on anymore. And I literally had to delete the app off my phone for a while. Again, seeing people try to criticize Phoenix and saying that, oh, they're a fraud team. And this game just proves why the Warriors are going to win the whole thing and all this dumb shit. Like at least let them lose. If Phoenix loses, then say all that shit and i could be like i mean they lost whatever just be toxic on twitter they won the game how does that even make sense i've never seen a team have to go through that ever i mean to be fair it seems like phoenix is being hated on for being the best team in basketball i've said before a million times the gap between first and second in the nba is not even close and phoenix is a better team by a large margin there's a reason most teams cannot attest to them also we talked about this when the timberwolves played the suns but when will y'all learn to stop fucking with jay crowder it was the suns that executed to get win number 62. The Warriors now have officially dropped into the fourth spot. Dallas has surpassed them because they own the tiebreaker. Once again, the final. We've been through this a million times. If there's one person you don't want to fuck with, it's Jay Crowder. We saw it with the goddamn Lakers. We saw it with the Timberwolves. And now we're seeing it with the Warriors. Mind you, this wasn't just a post-game thing. This went on for the entire game. Also, I know some of these things are kind of out of order. And when I'm saying them, because there's just so many things I have 
have to say about this game. But when I tell you people were saying that we forced a Devin Booker MVP agenda and that he doesn't deserve it because of last night's game is so crazy to me. Devin Booker has been playing flawlessly the whole entire season and he has one bad game. And then it's, oh, we pushed a Devin Booker MVP narrative. Oh, he's not actually that good. We overhyped him. The man struggles for one game and we have people saying that he's overrated and that he doesn't deserve to be an MVP candidate. I don't care if the motherfucker had negative 20 points yesterday. He still deserves to be in the conversation. People saying that, oh, just because he's the best player on the best team means he should be a candidate and that's dumb. Forget to mention the wide gap between first and second. I feel like people are not talking about it. If it was like last year where the Suns and Jazz were right at the edge to see who would get the first seed and it was super close and I'd completely understand. Like if we tried to make Donovan Mitchell the MVP last year, then I would honestly understand this take and I'd be like, you know what? Yeah, that's kind of dumb. However, the Jazz were only the first seed last year by one game. In fact, it might have been half a game. The Suns aren't just playing like the best team in the NBA. They're dominating like the best team in the game. What team has been able to dominate Aiden like this this whole year. That was funny, right? But seriously, the disrespect that Devin Booker gets is completely insane to me. It's just so confusing how last year people actually liked the Suns when they were in the playoffs and were saying, oh yeah, we love this underdog story. But I think it became once we realized that they're an actual threat to the NBA for years to come that we're like, oh god, this team is really good. The Warriors, the Grizzlies, the Jazz, even teams in the East like the Heat and Bucks might not win an NBA title because of this team that is ran like a well-oiled machine that doesn't have that many flaws and the flaws they have they've been attacking some people would say that this game proved that the phoenix suns are not going to win the nba title but i highly disagree phoenix has faced so much adversity throughout the year with injuries and just a bunch of stuff going on and i think this game was able to show that they can struggle in game they can have a bad shooting night booker can shoot like 5 of 22 and have a bad game and we can still win games we can miss some of our key role players and still be able to perform at a high level even even when we're on the road, which fun fact, the Phoenix Suns have the opportunity to have the best road record in NBA history. So while most teams, when they go to other arenas, they're normally feared at the fact that the other team has home court advantage, I think Phoenix is going to be just fine. Because obviously, throughout the whole entire NBA playoffs, they're going to have home court advantage. Whether they make it to the first round or they make it to the NBA finals, they're going to have home court advantage the whole way. And yet, when they go on the road, they're going to be prepared because they have the best record when it comes to road games. In the words of Duct Guru, who was voted the worst NBA Twitter account by the Suns page, which by the way, y'all should check them out. They're doing some like awards and stuff for the Phoenix Suns, whether it's just people in the community or even some Twitter accounts. Dr. Guru himself said that there were levels to this and the Phoenix Suns are on that level and maybe they've even surpassed it. They have six games till the regular season ends and they have an opportunity to do some damage in the playoffs, but we've been knowing this. I've never been more confident in a team in my life when it comes to just the NBA in general. Somehow you you can have the best record on all these stats and these crazy achievements and yet people are going to doubt you because when you prove people wrong on a national television standpoint and people didn't expect you to do this well except some 17 year old kid named specs media and the whole suns community i think it's safe to say that they know why they're not rooting for them so yes even winning a game versus one of the top contenders in the nba is not enough and you're going to get criticized i want to say i've never seen this before however this is just a typical day as a Phoenix Suns fan.